Are people becoming obsolete? A giant electronic brain has started cogitating at the University of Pennsylvania. It's made of vacuum tubes, like your radio, and it can add up a column of figures a yard long in a second. It's the world's first electronic computer. Right now, it's solving mathematical problems for the U.S. Army, but who knows, someday a machine like this may check up on your income tax. Do you believe that the world's first electronic computer, called ENIAC, was built in America in the autumn of 1945? Many people are convinced that this is a historical fact, but it isn't. In fact, the world's first computer had already been working successfully five years earlier, in 1940, in Germany. What's more, a prototype of this machine was built in 1938. Sounds incredible, like a German space base on the moon, but it's no fantasy. Let's find out how events unfolded. This video was created by SumSub, the verification platform. We make the digital world people-friendly, yet secure. The Second World War began on September the 1st, 1939. The German army was fighting in Poland. I therefore resolve to speak to Poland in the same language in which Poland has addressed us. Konrad Ernst Otto Zeus, a young Berliner working as an engineer at the Henschel Aircraft Factory in Schönefeld, was drafted to the front. Konrad Zeus was born in Berlin into the family of a post office clerk. In 1928, he enrolled at the Technical University of Berlin in the Faculty of Engineering and Architecture but found this profession boring. He graduated as a civil engineer in 1935. Civil engineers carried out a huge number of mathematical calculations using large books with tables of figures. Zeus found it too tedious and dreamed of automating this process. To realize his dream, Zeus began to design a mechanical calculator to help him in his engineering work. Adding machines existed before this, but Zeus's machine was unusual. Firstly, it worked in the binary number system, like modern computers. It was a floating point binary mechanical calculator. No one had done this before. A mechanical arithmometer worked with a decimal number system. A machine that performed mathematical operations in binary showed the effectiveness of this principle, which is now used in all modern computers. Secondly, it could read instructions from a punched tape. Zeus used 35mm celluloid film as the punched tape, making holes in it with an awl. This was the first time in history that punched tape was used to store data. Now the principle of a separately stored program, where the program exists separately from the computer on some physical medium, seems obvious. But it was a real discovery in 1939, and it was Konrad Zeus who invented it. The Z1 consisted of different functional units. The input unit, the output unit, the memory units and the addition unit. Each of these units was built for a specific purpose and all units were connected. The machine contained a complex set of metal plates, each of which could be moved in a strictly defined direction. The movement of some of the plates, which indicated the values of the calculated quantities and the mathematical operation to be performed, caused the movement of a number of other plates, which changed the register of binary numbers and remembered the intermediate result. The data obtained in this way could then be used to perform other transformations. And so it was born, the first programmable computer in history named Z1. Konrad Zeus began assembling it in 1936 in the living room of his parents' house. At the same time, he worked as a design engineer at the Henschel Aircraft Factory near Berlin. In 1938, the assembly of the Z1 was complete. But it was too soon to celebrate for Zeus, as the machine broke down too often because it had a very complicated design and insufficient mechanical precision. The monster was made up of 30,000 parts, so it was very difficult to repair. From an objective point of view, the practical value of this device was rather small. Perhaps its only useful feature is the ability to store instructions on punch tape. But the logic of automatic calculations in a binary system developed by Zeus, which proved the fundamental possibility of creating programmable computers that work directly with binary code, was of great scientific value. 
The young inventor plans to perfect his calculator, but this plan was not to be because he was called to the front. Even though the 1940s was a long time ago, a significant proportion of the world's population do suffer from digital exclusion. In many regions, especially in emerging markets, digital access really isn't equal. Hi, my name's Lucas, back once again from SumSub. So now following this, lots of people can't really enjoy full digital rights simply because of where they come from. They come from these gray areas. And in such cases, companies often ignore the user's personal characteristics, focusing instead on the region. This eventually leads to companies losing out on potential customers or partners. So to promote inclusiveness and find opportunities in new markets, businesses should conduct fair and thorough checks. To do so, it is essential to understand the specifics of each region. We at SumSub can help with this, verifying users from all over the world, offering our expertise in a wide range of documents and languages. We can also adapt to regional specifics, enabling customers to create detailed verification journeys through what we call the SumSub Workflow Builder. This allows companies to set up a custom verification workflow based on various parameters, such as country of citizenship. All of this can then be done with no code. To learn more about this solution and SumSub, how we can help the user verification onboarding process easier, please click the link in the description below. Once in the army, Zeus managed to convince the command that he would be of more use to his country by continuing his research. Amazingly, he was allowed to return to his engineering work, and in 1939, he began developing a new version of the computer, which he called the Z2. Zeus decided to make this computer half mechanical and half electronic, using telephone rays as logic elements. To work on the electronic part of the machine, Zeus recruited his friend, the electronics engineer Helmut Schreyer. Schreyer suggested using vacuum tubes as the basis for a computer, but Zeus abandoned this idea because the tubes were unreliable. If this computer had been built on vacuum tubes, it would have broken down every 20 hours, like Latecomer ENIAC, which ran on these elements. In addition, the vacuum tubes get very warm during operation, and they attract insects, hence the term bug, which originally didn't mean a bug in the code, but a moth that shorted out the contacts on the circuit board. Zeus and Schreyer gave a lecture at the Technical University of Berlin, in which they outlined the essence of their project. But the idea of building a computer from several thousand electronic components aroused suspicion in the audience and was considered impractical. At the time, the most complex electronic circuits consisted of no more than a hundred elements. The friends knew the scientists were wrong and decided to continue their work anyway. On their own free time, with their own money and at their own risk. Work was completed in 1940. The machine took up several rooms in Zeus's parents' house. In September, the inventors presented the computer to the commission of the German Aerodynamic Research Institute. The commission was literally amazed by the capabilities of the computer and allocated funding to complete the project. The computer was taken to the aircraft factory and used to calculate aerodynamic corrections to the wings of flying bombs. Unlike the Z1, the Z2 used 16-bit fixed-point arithmetic instead of 22-bit floating point. The arithmetic and control logic was implemented using 600 electrical relay circuits, weighing over 600 pounds. The computer had 64 words of memory. The weight of the computer was 300 kilograms or 660 pounds. And the average calculation speed was 0.8 seconds for an additional operation. In comparison, ENIAC weighed 30 tons, but it was faster. ENIAC was capable of performing 357 multiplication operations, or 5,000 additional operations per second. In 1941, Zeus founded a company Zeus Apparatus Construction, the world's first commercial computer company, long before DEC and other giants of the IT industry. Zeus rented a workshop opposite his parents' house to assemble his computers. In May 1941, Conrad Zeus presented a computer he had built in his workshop, the Z3. The Z3 was a 22-bit binary floating point mechanical electronic calculator, programmable with loops but without conditional jumps with memory and an arithmetic unit based on telephone relays. Zeus obtained the telephone relays mainly by dismantling discarded telephone equipment. 
The Z3 was built with 2000 relays, implementing a 22-bit word length that operated at a clock frequency of about 5 to 10 Hz. The Z3 floating point was improved over that of the Z1 in that it implemented exception handling. The exceptional values plus infinity, minus infinity and undefined could be generated and passed through operations. If we compare this machine with ENIAC, whose memory capacity was 20 number words, the Zeus computer had a larger memory capacity, 64 words with a length of 22 bits, but less computational performance. The clock frequency of the ENIAC was much higher, 100 kHz, compared to the Z3's 5 to 10 Hz. Architecturally, however, ENIAC was a decimal machine, while the Z3 was a binary, like all the modern computers. It was the first machine in human history to have independently stored programs that could be recorded on punch tape. Development of the Z3 computer was partly funded by the government-sponsored German Research Institute for Aviation to automate its extensive calculations. This machine worked at the Henschel factory to calculate the HS-293 and HS-294 guided missiles developed by the German military between 1941 and 1945, which were the forerunners of the modern cruise missile. In 1942, Konrad Zeus began developing a successor to the Z3 called the Z4, an even more advanced computer based on telephone relays. This computer already had 1,024 memory registers for storing 22-bit words and a powerful relay-based processor that could perform binary number conversions at high speed. It used punched program tapes, which made programming and correcting programs easy. Numbers and digits were entered and output in decimal floating point, but the computer worked internally in binary. The machine had a large repertoire of instructions including square root, max, min and sign. Conditional checks included checks for infinity. The machine had a conditional branch facility added and could print on a Mercedes typewriter. This way, Zeus was the first who invented the printer and was able to attach it to a computer. The machine had a large repertoire of instructions, the prototype of the programming language. Zeus later developed the world's first fully-fledged programming language for his computers, which he called Plankakul, Plan Calculus. This language had a major influence on the future syntax of Algol. Zeus tried to get funding for his company from the German government, but his application was rejected as strategically unimportant because the government believed that Germany would achieve world domination before the machine was built. The war progressed rapidly, and success at the front inspired optimism in Germany. But history took a different turn. In 1943, the Allies began air raids on Berlin. Zeus's workshop at Methfesselstrasse 7 and his parents' house were completely destroyed in an Allied air raid in late 1943. The Z1, Z2 and Z3 computers, as well as the documentation, were buried under the ruins forever. This effectively ended the possibility of further research. Much later, these computers were restored from the sketchy drawings that remained. These machines are now on display in German museums. But the unfinished Z4, which Zeus built in a new workshop at Orionstrasse 6, remained intact. In 1945, the Russian and Allied armies approached Berlin. After the war, Zeus lived in poverty for several years and was unable to finish work on the Z4 computer. In 1949, the Swiss mathematician Edward Stiefel visited Zeus. When Stiefel formulated a differential equation as a test, Zeus immediately programmed and solved it on the Z4. Stiefel was so impressed that he bought the computer for his newly founded Institute for Applied Mathematics in Zurich. At the time, it was the only working digital computer in Central Europe. The Z4 worked there until 1950. After selling some of his patents to IBM, Zeus saved some money and resumed his business of building commercial computers, founding the company Zeus KG. This company built many computers labeled Z through to Z43, including the Z22, the first computer with a memory based on magnetic storage. Here is our latest development, the electronic rechen machine Z22. In the 1970s, however, Zeus's computers could not compete with IBM and DEC machines, and his company ceased to exist independently. It was taken over by another company, 
which eventually became part of the Siemens Group. Konrad Ernst Otto Zeus died of a heart attack on 18th of December 1995. Zeus never became a member of the Nazi party, but some people criticized him for working for the Nazis during the war. Much later, he said that his question was similar to Goethe's Faust question, that scientists and engineers sometimes had to choose between doing their work for military interests or not working at all. Computer technology, like atomic energy, is first and foremost a scientific achievement that can be used both for peaceful purposes and to make weapons. Everything depends on whose hands these technologies fall into. It's rumored that Zeus was invited to work in America after the war, but he refused because he wanted to develop computer technology in his own country. His dream was to make computers in Germany as good as those in the United States. Zeus was a true pioneer in the field of computer science, and his death marked the end of another era in the development of European information technology. It could be said that Zeus, like the computer enthusiasts of the 1970s, started building his computer in his garage, just like Steve Jobs did. Yes, he was Steve Jobs, but only in 1936. Maybe that's why his company didn't become Apple. He invented computers too early in life. The world wasn't ready for it. <laughs>